Some people are hard to communicate with. Has anybody ever, ha ever had to do a job, have to go on a job, and the job was hard? Yeah. It's hard. If it wasn't hard, they wouldn't call it work. Yeah, exactly. Why is it that in some situations, when things are hard, we rationalize and don't get involved, and in other things, when things are hard, we roll up our sleeves and do the best we can? Comfort zone. Comfort zone. Comfort zone, right. Because if it's a, if it's a problem with a, a, a power system or HVAC system or something like that, you guys know that there's nobody else going to do it but you, and you're gonna, it's your job, and you're going to roll up your sleeves, and you're going to do the best you can. And maybe you can't do a perfect job, but you're going to do the best you can. It's hard, yes, but you're going to do the best you can. Now, unfortunately, what happens is we could have 20 people in the room who are all seeing the same thing and have one person in front of the room that's saying something and everybody in the room is disagreeing with what's going on and nobody says a word because that person is hard. And there could be retribution. Do you think you could get in trouble if you go into a job that's hard and do the wrong thing and mess something up? Yep. Could you get in trouble? Yes, you could. I mean, you could get in trouble. You got jobs where there's big impact. If you mess up, there could be trouble, but it's within your comfort zone. So you will take that risk. Otherwise, you quit and go work somewhere else where you don't take this, you don't have this kind of risk. But somehow, we, we, we get used to, difficult people are like a unique situation. We put them in a category and say they're impossible. So we just let them go. Why? Because we've tried it before and we got our hand slapped. And so having had our hand slapped, we go, it doesn't work. Well, the reason it doesn't work is because you're inexperienced. Now, if you, if you try to go in and work on a complex system and you don't have the skills to work on it, you could mess it up. But now, how do you ever get the skills? You could have a guy that's 20 years in this business and still doesn't have the skills. If whenever he finds something he doesn't know how to do, he gets somebody else to do it. And he only does the things that he already knows how to do. Now then, he gets really good at the things that he knows how to do, and he still is incompetent at the things he doesn't know how to do. And so this is what I'm trying to get to today, is that there are things that you don't know how to do well enough so that when you encounter them, you back off and you don't get involved because of fear. Fear of what might happen, fear of retribution, or just a fear that says it's not going to do any good, so what's the point of wasting my time with it? And then you just back off from it. Whatever the reason might be, it's not assertiveness because you could speak up, but you don't. Now, there's another thing, that's, when we talk about all these skills being related, it's like, Mike, when you were saying, um, you know, when you were thinking about conflict management, it sounds a lot like what I was saying about teamwork, they're all interrelated skills. And the thing is, if you're assertive, but you don't have any skills, then you just make an idiot out of yourself. You ever seen somebody that, you know, every question they ask is a stupid question, and you just go, where is this person coming from? And, and they're, you know, they, they talk all the time, but all they do is reveal their ignorance. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not saying be assertive and be stupid. I'm saying learn the skills so that five years from now, you're not afraid to speak up with this person in the room or to challenge something that they said or to bring up a fact that, that, that should, that needs to be acknowledged. You know, I think a lot of times we need to acknowledge the true facts and we're in a room and there's distortions going on. And you have some of those facts and if you're a leader, it's really important for you to learn how to communicate it. You do run the risk. But it starts with assertiveness and then along the way you start to realize practice makes perfect and you get better and better and better, which means that over time you get more and more confident to speak up. You have greater effects when you do. And that's what I'm calling you to here. Decide to be an influencer, practice influence skills every day, and challenge yourself whenever you can, if you can ever catch yourself saying, that's not right, 
or whatever, ask yourself, why am I not speaking up? Why am I not saying a word? Ask yourself a serious question. We don't ask ourselves the question, or when we do, we rationalize. Get out of your comfort zone. 